It says it's good to fly. Let's see what it does. Take off. So that should be GPS hold. So no toilet bowl or anything. It should sit right there and fight the wind nicely because it's GPS. And before we get into the review, here's a quick size comparison. There's the CME drone, and here we go. Here is a Samsung Note 8 cell phone. Big difference in size. Some of the interesting things about this drone is right in the front here, we have an eight megapixel camera, which is movable. It also takes video at 1080p at 30 frames per second, and it is image stabilization. And like most drones on the market today, the arms do fold out. One very obvious feature missing on the CME would be sensors. There's none on the side, none on the front, none in the rear, and unfortunately, none on the bottom. However, outdoor flights will be stable as a rock due to the great GPS built into the CME. You can see how the camera's working. It's really an outdoor drone. It's a little difficult. You need a lot of space to keep it uh, level. Here, I'll bring it back up. You can see how the, good the camera quality is. I'll bring it back. Whoa. And there we go, there's the camera quality. And now I'll just bring it down. All right, before we head outside for our outdoor flight, let me just show you the features I'm gonna use on the outdoor flight. Here's the camera to take snapshots. Here's the video to start and stop video. Right here is the 360 mode. I'm gonna put it in 360 so that the CME rotates around 360 degrees slowly. Looking along the middle section of the CME, this is my height. I can raise or lower the CME above the ground with this here slider. On the right side, this is my directional control. I can cause the CME to fly forward, backwards, left or right with this control. Back over on the left side, these little indicators here will tell me my GPS quality and how many satellites I'm receiving. Next is a lock button. This here locks the CME. I must press it to unlock the CME for flight. Down at the bottom, it tells me if there's an SD card in the system, how much battery power I have left, my Wi-Fi connection, my GPS connection, my takeoff button. This is the follow me button. Anytime you attempt to take off, you're gonna have to calibrate if I hold the lock. And when you're outdoors, the only calibration you should do is step two, accelerometer. And step three is your compass calibration, which you'll see me do in the video. Yep, it's still winter here. And it's pretty darn cold outside right now. Minus eight Celsius. I got the see me here, pull out the little props. It's kind of cold out here to fly this, but we'll test it out. Camera. Let's tilt it just a little bit downwards. Power it on. Click on the CME app. We're all set. CME. Let's do a compass calibration. We have to spin the drone that way. And it will tell me to spin it a different way. Now it says spin it this way. And we're all good. So GPS, GPS is showing 20. Take off. So that should be GPS hold. So no toilet bowl or anything. It should sit right there and fight the wind nicely because it's GPS. Let's see. Now I can fly it forward, backwards. Let's uh, take it up. Now you can move it. It really, look how, look how you turn it. This is the yaw. You have to do this. See how I'm doing it on the uh, screen here? You have to slide. That's your yaw. It's a very slow yaw. I'll put it a little higher. There we go. Now you can see me from afar. Let's do the 360 thing and see what it does. So 360, it spins around. It's up in the air there, spinning around by itself. It's sitting in one spot if I just stand here. You can see it's turning, I'll get under it. So that's what happens when you have a GPS drone. Uh, the GPS holds it in place. Like it's windy out here right now but it's doing a good job of staying right in place and uh, spinning around. Let me do the follow me, because a lot of people always ask on the site, what's a good $100 drone that can follow you? So it should follow me. Here I'm running backwards, watch me wipe out. <laughs> ah, so it's doing a good job, follow me this way. I don't know how well this works. Hey, I'm over here, drone. Okay, now I've stopped moving, is it gonna find me? You're gonna find me, you're gonna find me gonna find me. It found me. 
So I guess the follow me does work. And the way it does the follow me is it uses the phone for GPS. So it can do some pretty cool things. Let's see what's my battery power. Oh, I think I'm out of battery power, it says. That's the problem, it's low on battery power. So if it's low on battery power, let's do uh, a height test. Let's whip it up and kill the battery. And now it just, my, my controller is going crazy saying, hey, what are you doing? We're out of power here. If I spin it around, here, I'll put it back. I'll bring it down here. I don't want to bring it down too fast. So the cold is not too good for these drones because I'm uh, running low on power. It's not bad though. It said I was out of power, but it's still flying. I'm going to just see what happens. I'll go until it's, uh, it's done. It's still recording too. I don't know what that video quality. It's supposed to be 1080p. It has a few other features too. After, well here, I'll try a snapshot while it's going here. I'll hit this thing. Apparently it's got a really good camera, so I'll go take a picture. Ah, the little light in the front flashes when it takes a picture. Very nice. And it actually shows me the picture on my screen right after I take it. So that's a nice touch. So when drones start to do the toilet bowl thing like this, that's a compass and a GPS problem which is also a problem with low battery. There's not enough battery to run both. So because of that, you get those massive fluctuations. So I'm gonna bring it down for a landing before I, let's just go back here. Go down, oh! <laughs> That's the worst landing I've ever seen in my life. I'm not winning any awards for the landing dude. The front has a light that stays on all the time. That's to show you orientation, so you know which way the camera's pointing. And it is quite bright, it works outdoors, which is really nice. So you see the light, and I'm going to take a picture. Goes on and off. And of course the only negative with this is that I don't have any spare batteries, because the battery is part of the drone. It has a long-lasting battery, but in this cold, it's not very good. All right, before I get into my thoughts on this really cool Simi drone, I'm gonna show you a quick unboxing so that you see all the cool stuff you get in this really professional package. It's really good. Watch this, check it out. The good people at Banggood sent me this really cool Simi drone, which has one of the nicest packing jobs I've seen in a long time. Check this out. The cover opens up nicely, it's like a book, and your drone is in. It's almost like I'm receiving a cell phone. Here we have the drone itself. Very nice design, very flat. Nothing on the bottom except the power button, it appears. No sensors otherwise. On the back, this is where you put the micro SD card for recording your video, if you wish. And over here is where you would charge it up with a USB cable. On the front is the eight megapixel camera. Next, we have a very nice box here. Inside would contain the user guide. On the bottom, you have a charger. Included is a wall outlet charging plug. You also receive four spare props. An included USB cable, four prop cards. The CME's battery is inside and non-removable, so let's weigh the entire drone. Batteries included. It weighs 147 grams. All right, my final thoughts on this here see me drone. Well, this is for all intents and purposes exactly what a selfie drone is. If you ever wanted a selfie drone or you kept hearing about a selfie drone, well, this is what a selfie drone is. It is designed for social media. So if you're out with the family in the park and you want to snap some pictures of what they're doing, activities, or you're someplace, you can have it fly it straight above you or around you. It will do that. It's really great. And within the see me app itself, it actually has the ability to input two of your most favorite social media Accounts. So if you liked Facebook or Twitter, you can input them. And while you're flying with this, if you start snapping pictures or video, you can click on those little accounts right in the app while you're flying and it will send the information to those locations. And you can even pre-include a caption for each of the items that you send. And I've never seen a drone in this price range with an eight megapixel camera with 1080p video with a flash on the front. That is very rare, if not unheard of, for that price range. You're usually spending quite a bit more money for something of that capability. And the fact that it has GPS just blows my mind because you get all of this plus the GPS. Now, if only it had sensors on the bottom for flying indoors and a removable battery, well, then if it had both of those, I'd have to give the entire drone here a 10 out of 10. But since it's lacking in those areas, well, I have to give it an eight out of 10. But that's a solid 8 out of 10 because this is an awesome drone for the price. There's obviously a lot of money and development that went into this drone because it's extremely refined and the app is unlike an app I've ever seen. It is designed perfectly for social media. You can even adjust the settings for the camera as you would on a much more expensive drone. So that is really strange. All I can say to sum up is check out the link below. The price is really good. Like I said, this used to be 200 bucks and I believe it's less than 100 bucks and it might even be a discount code. So it's a really awesome deal. 
If you wanted a selfie drone, this is the one to have. I don't know of any better selfie drones on the market today. All right, if you enjoyed that review, hit that like button. And if you want to see more drone reviews of toy drones all the way up to the $1,000 professional drones, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, take care.